Hello, everyone, and welcome to the MMA Island podcast. I am Jack Kennedy alongside Caleb McNamara and Hunter Boss. We're welcoming back one of our favorite guests, Dre Miley. Thank you so much for coming back on. We're glad to have you. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. I've been wondering when I was going to talk to you guys again. So here we are. Absolutely. Well, first thing I wanted to ask you about and just wanted you to kind of explain is your emotions from getting into Bellator, getting signed to Bellator. How excited are you to be a part of that organization and take that massive step in your MMA career? I'm pretty excited. It's something that I never saw that was going to happen, especially with the whole one. I think I didn't think, you know, everybody was telling me it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I was like, yeah, realistically, maybe, maybe not. So when I got it, I was I was shocked. I couldn't. I wasn't like too high, I wasn't too low. I was just like kind of like deadpan. I was like, oh, this is really happening. I can't really believe that because I, you know, I just threw threw up a, a idea to my coaches and was like, hey, Ronell Lugo and Jalen Bates' fight's not happening, you know, and Lugo wants to fight me. And I've told Lugo I wanted to fight him and told the same thing to Bates. And Lugo was like, yeah, let's do it. And then I told my coaches and his bell tour was like, yeah, absolutely. And then you know, one thing led to another. I guess Lugo didn't want to take the fight, so they tried to give me to Lucas Brennan. So, you know, it's awesome. It's awesome now that I am, I guess, part of their their promotion. So we still got the contract, so that's all the main thing. Absolutely. We'd like to hear yeah. that. We'd like to hear that, Dre. Um, I had a quick question just regarding your Instagram. On your Instagram, you changed your nickname from the one eye dragon to uh, Dokugan Ryu, which I believe, I don't know if that's the right translation or not. Or pronunciation, I should say. I was wondering if you could tell me what Dokugan Ryu means and what it means to you. Oh, it's the same thing. It's just that oh. in Japanese. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's the same thing. Uh that's exactly that's what they called him. That's what his and you know, Japan, you know, that's their native their language. So they called him man that translates to one eye dragon. A lot of people get it mixed up like an actual dragon. It's like, no, it's the person. It's just mm-hmm. that he was that fierce and you know, scary that they believed him to be like a dragon type thing so dragon in japan is like ultimate sign of like power and you know intimidation and stuff like that and destruction so sick (laughs) yeah Yeah, i get asked that a lot what does that mean i was like it's just one eye dragon it's just a lot uh shorter yeah absolutely dre first of all phenomenal to have you back with us we really appreciate you taking the time My question is a two-part question, because why would we do anything easy on this podcast? It would be boring, and it just isn't what we do. Um, On on your social media point, you've been very vocal about campaigning to be on two different cards, Bellator California and Bellator Dublin. You know, I'm not plugging anything. I'm just saying, you know (laughs) know the vibes. You know what it is here. Um, My my question is, has there been any updates on on getting approval for either card? And do you have a preference for where you would prefer to make your debut? I don't have a preference. You know, I would like to be in California because uh, I have a lot of family in California and that'd be cool to make one. And, you know, I've always heard stories about California and I always want to be a part of it. I've always wanted to go out to Team Alpha Male and see how I stack up with those guys. So if I have a chance to cross train with them would be cool. And then Ireland is just one of those like bucket list type things. You know, I want to travel. Me and my wife just talk about travel when the kids get older. And it'd be nice to, you know, take her and, you know, go to Ireland and go see, you know, the beautiful landscapes and the scenery and the historical monuments over there. Uh, I don't really have a preference. If I'm healthy enough, I'll do both. It's just the idea of just just telling them that I'm ready for whenever because it's exactly what it is. Uh, But, yeah. Yeah, nice. And just to follow up on that, has there been any updates on your uh, approval for either card? Because I know you were a little bit frustrated with that. Uh, not necessarily. It hasn't been really anything. I guess we're just waiting on an opponent. Because the good thing about, uh, you know, the Connecticut thing, it wasn't about the eye. It was just the commission just, I guess they fumbled it. They, you know, they approved it and they didn't approve it. You know, they got caught up in their own story, so. Never got a clear cut answer. It was just I was just told that they fumbled and it was their bad. So, uh, but the good news is that California would probably give me a license pretty easily, given that uh, Zion Clark he just fought this mm-hmm. this past weekend and he did a pro debut, which we everybody knows that you have to go through a commission body to get a license. Period. So if you're going to tell me that I can't defend myself intelligently, but you can let this this guy, you know, he's a phenomenal athlete, 
you're going to let the guy who has no torso, you can't kick him. You can't do anything. He's a grounded opponent the entire time. So you have to bend the rules for him, but you can't let me play by the same rule set that everybody else is playing for. So it sounds, sounds kind of con- contradictory. So we might be going to Cali. We might be going to Ireland. Hell, honestly, I'd love to do both. So Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And for me, along the same lines, right, with Bellator still, uh, they have arguably their biggest card of the year a couple Saturdays ago in Sabatello versus Rafi and Stotts. Um, what was your opinion on that that card and the result of the main event? Oh, the, when the card got announced, I was like, I was very excited. This was before I, I even was considered for being known. I was like, damn, this is going to be a really good card because Sabatello and Stotts is like, that's that's a killer fight. I know I've been following Stotts forever. Mm-hmm. I've told people stories about how he came down to the gym one time with one of uh, my ex-teammate of mine. And they came down. We me and him got to wrestle and how big he was. And Sabatello is just a fun character. His fight style is complimentary to how he is. So I was excited about it. Every fight was on there. It was awesome. Jerry Scoggins and Cass Bell was a good fight. They they had some bangers on there. So it was very exciting to watch it. And then when I got on it, I was like, oh, I don't even care if I win or lose. Like, I'm going to sit here and watch <laughs> the entire fight card. Yeah. So it was, it, was, it was nice. I think that was by far their best card. Yeah, absolutely. Did, who did you think won the main event? Did you think uh, Stotts got the got the nod over Sabatello? Oh yeah, I think Stotts did it. I really did. You know, it's Sabatello had his moments, but you got to look at it through, through the duration of the fight. I believe that Stotts did everything that he could to you know nullify everything that Sabatello did. And Sabatello made it competitive. He made it very competitive. But Stotts, there's a reason why Stotts has been at that point. For a while there, uh, Sabatello's only had maybe about two or three fights in Bellator, but his his style and the way he promotes himself is what got him there. Yeah, for sure. I like it. I like it. I, I have a quick question uh, regarding Twitter, actually. I, I saw not too long ago that you tweeted out to Michael Bisping asking for any advice. And I was curious to see if Bisping responded. No, he's not responded. Like, he's... I've tagged people that know him. I've I've been in contact with Big John McCarthy. You know, he tweets me. And so I know Bisping sees it. I mean, I, I've added Michael Bisping. I've added the people. I've even added uh, Anthony Smith, who does the podcast with him. Yeah. Just seems like Bisping doesn't want to talk to me. So, I mean, like, it's, it's okay to hide over, you know, it's okay not to offer, but at least give me the decency of saying, hey, I see your tweets, like it, something, you know, anything. Or, hell, send me a private message. I'm not going to screenshot it and send it everywhere. Yeah, don't worry. We'll be adding him after this podcast as well, too. We're going to we're gonna get his attention, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been trying. Like, I even follow him on Instagram. Like, he's got to a point where, like, I can't comment on his stories. Mm. I've been in his DMs. I've been everywhere. <laughs> I've been trying my best to get a hold of him. If I find his email, it's, it's game over. I'm going to throw him up. <laughs> Oh my god, that, that's fantastic. Um, Dre, next question for me is, um, it's actually about a guy you mentioned a few minutes ago, Zion Clark. And as you said, he made his pro debut last weekend, got a pretty phenomenal decision as well. It was actually really great to see. My question for you in relation to Zion Clark is that you're two guys who have kind of been written off by a lot of haters and naysayers who basically said that you wouldn't be able to do our sport the way other people would and you would never be able to achieve what you already have so far. When you saw Zion Clark get the decision, did it mean anything special to you? Were you able to like relate to it in any way? Did it, did it mean anything different to you? I was excited about it till I found out what the rule set was. Ah, uh, okay. So I- because you know, I understand that you're I, – and he, I'm pretty sure he does too. But at the same time, it's like if we're trying to make – because it's me, him, Nick Newell, and there's probably another guy, you know, that have, like, disabilities. If you're trying to push this envelope saying that we are more than capable of doing everything that everybody else can do and probably do it better, then we can't have them be like, oh, well, I'm a grounded opponent all the time. Like, I can't, I can't have a little bent to me. That would be me saying, oh, you can't go to my left side because of my, like, we have to show them that no matter what the rule set is, we're going to show you that your rule set can still apply to what we have. So I was excited, but then I found out that, you know, he's obviously a grounded opponent the entire time and I had no fives kicks, no fives everything. And then the fact that he fought a guy who was like 0-4 and, and he fought on a promotion that was been flagged by topology by, you know, they because they, they've been known to pad records. So 
and they've been opening about it. So that's to me, it kind of writes it off a little bit. What makes it harder for guys like me to be like, okay, let's test this legitimacy out even more. So, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, last one from us. We had a question for you. So almost the end of the year, the fight calendar is over for the UFC. Uh, what was your favorite MMA fight from this past year? And then what's an MMA fight that you're most looking forward to in the upcoming year of 2023? Oh, goodness. There is a lot. <laughs> there is a lot of fights. It's a loaded question, yeah. It <laughs> is. It's worse if you like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I think out of like a higher level, the higher levels, like uh, UFC and Bellator, Probably the one that made me go like, oh shit, the most was probably Leon Edwards and uh mm -hmm. Usman because yeah. like he was he was giving it to Edwards the entire fight. And then the beauty of the sport is that you just get you get touched and it can happen at any point in time. I dropped my jaw, like me and my wife was watching the yeah. fights, and like we were like, this fight's over. It's so, like, you know, yeah. I was like, down. I was like, this is over. He's going to win by decision. Yeah. And he gets clipped, and my jaw just drops. So it's like, <laughs> holy. I was like, damn. Yeah. Um, I, and then the shocking one was, well, not so much shocking, was the it is the Izzy fight, Izzy and uh, uh, Alex fight. That was shocking to me. I feel like they should let that go in a little bit more. Mm. Uh, I can't think of any regional shows that I would like, besides the ones that we all fought on before. So anytime me and my teammates fight, I'm excited about it. I think they're the biggest fights there are. So, yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, do you have one that you're like looking forward to coming up? Like, is there a card? I can't say there's a. I don't know. I don't think there is an actual card I'm looking forward to. I will say I'm curious about the the Sterling and uh, Cejudo fight. I'm mm -hmm. curious about how that plays out. I'm also curious about the. Uh, we call it the John Jones and the Gano fight that they keep trying to push down because I'm kind of curious how, how that's going to translate because Jones didn't, Jones didn't have knockout power like heavyweight. So it's how you're going against the biggest monster and, you know, in UFC is Nagano. He's not happy about his contract. So that one's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, and then I want to see the fight, the absolute fight I'm looking forward to. And I feel like this is such a, such a ball dropper by the UFC is Josh Emmett and Yair yeah. Rodriguez oh, yeah. for the interim belt. It should not be for interim belt. If Volkanovski is going to move up and challenge Islam, which Islam is going to beat him, I honestly think that they should be fighting for the belt because Josh Emmett has been on a tear for a long time, and Yair is just exciting. So I think that is the fight that I'm probably the most excited about. That's going to be an amazing fight, and that's a fantastic answer. Uh, this was a great podcast. We love having you on. As always, everyone, make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. You can listen to us everywhere, literally everywhere, including iTunes and Spotify. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at mma.island.podcast. Follow Dre Miley as well. Follow his MMA career, Dre. We really appreciate the time. All right, good talking to you guys. Thanks, thank you for having me on. You guys take care of yourselves.